the Hat Man. Tell me, dear viewer, do you have the Easy Flash Omega flash cart for the Game Boy Advance? You don't? Then what the hell are you doing here? Just for funsies, huh? Hm. Anyway, if you've got the Omega, then you've clearly got a ROM collection. Given that the ability of this device is to play any Game Boy ROM, you may have decided to hunt down homebrew games or apps by now. If you have, then you'll have noticed that there are no thumbnails in the file browser of the Omega for your homebrew, throwing off the feng shui of the whole menu. Well, worry not! I come to you with the solution! Thanks to some folks over at the GBA Temp Forum, I've come to possess the knowledge you seek, and will impart that knowledge into you right now. You can also follow along if you just want to change a pre-existing thumbnail. The steps should be the same. Okay, in the description below are four links to programs that you will need for this endeavor. First things first, download the new programs. They do not install like normal programs, so you can choose where to extract them to and that place will be where they run from. I recommend placing them all in a common folder for easy navigation. Also, don't forget to download the images folder from the Easy Flash Omega website. On the webpage, just scroll down a bit in the uh, Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition section that's displayed and click on the download link. Then extract that folder into your SD card directly if you have the normal firmware. If you have the Simple Light firmware, it goes in the system folder. And now for some foreknowledge. Every Game Boy game has a unique product code. These are what you'd see printed on real cartridges, and they're hard-coded within every game's ROM. The Easy Flash Omega file browser has the ability to read these product codes and assign thumbnails based on them. Most homebrew will likely have a blank product code, and thus these games cannot possibly be recognized for thumbnail assigning. Within the thumbnails folder, you'll find that everything is organized by a set of four seemingly random characters. These are the middle four characters of every product code. These four characters are what we care about and are what we will be changing. Before we begin, I want you to check your homebrew ROMs with the GBA Tool Advanced Program. This is because I am unsure about aftermarket indie games such as Infinity, which I cannot afford to buy and will not be pirating. Launch the program and open a ROM. If in the highlighted area there is a code that is not zeros or blanks, then you can probably just skip to the thumbnail part. If you're itching to change the thumbnail of a retail game, then you too can skip to the thumbnail part. Use the chapters to skip ahead. Alright, let's get cracking. Make a new folder somewhere easy to find for your ROMs. Then, inside that folder, make new folders for each one of your ROMs. Name them so that you can tell what they are. Move each ROM into its own folder. The reason for this is that the ROM Header Editor Advanced program is somewhat flawed and will rename and edit all ROMs within the same folder to be the exact same details. Launch the ROM Header Editor Advanced program and navigate to a ROM in the folders that we just made. Change the title to what you want. Then, change the game code to something like what I put for this homebrew port of Doom 1. Or to something random. Just keep in mind that you do not want this code to be one that any game in existence already has, as, again, codes are entirely unique. If you duplicate a code, you'll get the thumbnail of that pre-existing retail game, probably. You can also change the publisher to be whatever you want within a defined list. After all of your changes, save them. Do this for all of your ROMs. To easily review the middle four characters of these codes in the next step, 
You can either add them to the file names of your ROMs, memorize them, or use GBA Tool Advance to see them again. Next up is the thumbnails themselves. Alright, run Visual Boy Advance and in the settings, set the screenshot path to what you prefer. After that, run each game and capture your screenshots. The standard for the Easy Flash Omega thumbnails is shots of the title screens, so that's what I'll be capturing. However, you can take whatever screenshots you want. You can also make a custom image, but it needs to be the same dimensions as the regular screenshots. Now, launch the Thumbmaker program. Choose your input picture and where you want the export to go. Then click Create. Your new image will look funny and that's okay. For whatever reason, the Omega must use these blue tinted images. It then corrects them when they're shown to you in the menu. The last things you need to do to it are change the extension to .bmp and change the name to the corresponding game's product code that you set earlier. After all that, you can now place your ROMs onto your Easy Flash Omega micro SD card. Note that I am using the Simple Light custom firmware for the Omega. Next, navigate to the System folder and then to Images. The way the thumbnail folders works is like this. The first folder is for sorting by the first character of the product code. Within those folders are more lettered and numbered folders for sorting by the second character of the codes. If you are replacing a retail thumbnail, simply navigate to that game's pre-existing folder, delete or rename the original thumbnail, and paste in your new one. For me, I'll have to make new folders as I chose a custom product code in the D's for Doom, which there were never any of before. Since I made the code be D-O-O-M, etc., I need a folder named D, then a second folder named O. This is where I will be placing my new thumbnails. If you also made codes for letters that didn't exist before, you'll be making new folders like me. After that, you can start placing thumbnails where they go. When you're done, pop that micro SD card back into your Omega and fire it up. Check that it all worked out. And you're done! Woohoo! Personally, I was pretty bothered that my homebrew Doom ports didn't have screenshots. That's why I began the journey to figure this all out. I am very pleased with the results. I hope this was easy to follow for you guys. I am always improving my craft, so let me know in the comments how you feel. Also, if you have things that you want me to cover in a future video, comment about that too. I'll read your ideas and mull over what is and isn't possible for me to do. That's all I have for today, so I bid you all adieu. I will see you all in the next video, which will probably be Doom related as of recording. God, I freaking love Doom. Anyway, bye guys!